Hey everyone. Hey bag ladies and bag dudes. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. This is my husband Danny and you're watching Ask Sarah, my weekly Q&A chat. Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We saw that Gina had a question while we were watching everyone chatting before the show. And Gina said, um, hey, my fellow baggies, Sarah, what was the name of the pizza place you went to for your birthday? And that was this past November. Uh, Gina's headed to Chicago this weekend. I hope the weather starts looking up for you in Chicago when you're here, Gina. So the name of that restaurant was the Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinder Company. Uh, so two things to know about that particular restaurant. Uh, they don't take res reservations. I think they open up at 4 o'clock. And they also only take cash. So just be aware when you show up, just have some cash on you to pay the bill because they don't take credit cards. Um, I see Mary Grace is watching from Colorado. Susan's also watching. Um, Kay Dean from New York. So thank you everyone so much for joining us for Ask Sarah. Um, I think Terry had right. Of all the comments I've seen so far, Terry is the only one that addressed the elephant in the room. It should definitely say hi, Danny and Sarah. I saw people say hi to Dan, you know. No, Sarah. it's always Sarah and Danny. Oh. I think the order is incorrect. <laughs> oh, you like seeing Danny come up, up there first. I see, I see. I think it, it, it should really be that way. <laughs> so after the show tonight, we have about eight or nine loads of laundry to fold. Oh, my So goodness. I haven't folded any laundry in a week and a half, but I've continued putting in the washing machine in the oh, dryer. I just got a message. It says my mom needs my help after the show. No. And I stop <laughs> no. over. Don't try to pull Mom, that. I'll be over there right after the show. Don't worry <laughs> no, about no, it. No, 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 no. So what we've been doing with all the laundry is... Um, Stacking it on the bed, then taking it off the bed because we're going to wash... Fold it that day. Like, oh, we'll fold it tomorrow, then put it back in the baskets. And... <laughs> but it happens every day, so we need to find clothes to wear. So we'll dump all the laundry baskets on the bed. And then I'll be like, all right, you know, tonight's the night we're going to fold the laundry. And then, of course, every night I forget about the laundry until I get upstairs ready to go to bed. And I'm exhausted at that point every night. And so I'm like, no, tomorrow, we'll just do it tomorrow. So we put yep. it, we take it off the bed, put it in the baskets. And it's like three baskets with, like, laundry, you know, doubled up. So um, it's looking crazy up there. So we have to we have to fold laundry tonight. And I, I gave Danny notice before the show. I said, after the show, we've got to fold that laundry because... Uh, I'm not sure how much, I mean, how... Oh, how, we all do it together with the kids, not just us. Yeah, we, we, we're still using that Marie Kondo method of tidying up, and she had a certain way that she folded the clothes. <laughs> so everyone folds their own clothes and puts it away. And our previous policy was that I would fold the clothes, and then everyone would put their no, own No, I way. think uh, the previous policy was well, you, I was folding the clothes, and everyone puts their stuff away. Not every time. More recent. More recent. Yeah, but for sure. <laughs> Tamara says folding laundry is highly overrated. It's just hard because when you're looking for something... I know it's clean, but I, I can't find it because there's so much clean laundry and the kids are like, I can't find my gym pants or Violet's like, you know, I have gym tomorrow. I don't have any clean gym pants. And I'm like, I know they're, I know it's clean because everything's been washed. There's really no dirty clothes, but we just can't find anything. So yeah. uh, that's our task for later. I'm not looking forward to that. But Yeah, so it's good we're all pitching in and mm -hmm. take care of our own. Yeah. Sarah has by far the most clothes, so it's, it's a pleasure uh, for me. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> another weird thing that happened today is somehow I forgot to eat breakfast today and I didn't realize it till the day was halfway over. So I'm a, I don't s normally skip meals. I, I need to eat, especially when I first wake up and around 1030, I'm ready for lunch already. Yeah, that's, you know, the kind of person I am. And I have snacks periodically throughout the day also. And so uh, I went to riding my riding lesson today and my, ri my riding lesson last week was so good. And today was just, it, it was a little subpar. And I remember halfway through the lesson, I felt kind of like uh, I, I was almost punched in the stomach. It was like a weird feeling for just a second. And then I kind of pulled myself together and finished everything out. But I felt not as strong. And I was driving home from the lesson thinking about what I was going to eat for lunch. And then I called Danny. I was like, you know what? I forgot to eat breakfast today. And I didn't realize it until just now. So I was so busy getting the kids ready for school. Um, our bearded dragon flash, like I make her a salad in the morning, get her stuff ready. Uh, she gets a bath in the morning, and, like, I was so busy taking care of everyone else's stuff, I forgot to eat, which is not good because... Uh, I think both our kids also forgot to eat lunch because Sarah gave William <laughs> Violet's sandwich, and Violet had no sandwich, <laughs> and William does not eat Violet's <laughs> sandwich, so no one had lunch. <laughs> our kids both eat very specific sandwiches. Violet likes lunch meat and cheese on, a uh, like, a bakery-style bread, 
And William likes uh, store-bought bread. We usually get Sara Lee honey wheat, and he likes uh, Nutella on his sandwich. So they don't eat the opposing sandwiches. And I ac I've done this before. I accidentally put Violet's sandwich in William's lunch bag, so Violet had no sandwich. And William had an extra sandwich, which he would never eat. So I messed up with the meals today. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's get on to some sewing stuff. Uh, so I have an announcement, and I also typed it in the description of the show for tonight. Um, if you're going to QuiltCon next week, which is in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I'm going to read, uh, I'm, I'm also going to read the, an, the announcement out loud, but um, Mary Kowalski has organized a meetup for the So Sweetness members that will be at QuiltCon. And so if you'd like to meet up, um, meet Mary Kowalski. She'll have a sign with the So Sweetness logo on it. Um, she'll be in the food court area and in the exhibition hall at 11.15 a.m. on Friday, which is February 23rd. 22nd and then she says that will give us time to eat and then attend the lecture on modern quilts with the fabulous Mary Fonz at one o'clock. Mary Fonz also um, originally from Chicago so um, I've met I've actually met Mary in person before and she's lovely so I hope you have a great time at the meetup those of you that will be there and enjoy all of the lectures and the classes at QuiltCon. Um, it always looks amazing from the pictures that I see on social media so I hope you have a great time at that if you're going and again, the information is in the description of the live show. So um, rather than rewind after the show and hear me announce that again, you can just find it written out in the description of the show. Is it weird? I wanted to go to QuiltCon. I told Sarah, maybe we should just like, take a last minute and just head over to Tennessee and well, go check it out. We could have gone. I thought I mentioned it to you. And no. No? I thought you said no more driving to Tennessee because about being car sick. Oh, you meant with the kids go to QuiltCon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Do a little vacation. I don't know. I don't know if the kids would enjoy the, all the lectures and classes and, and such. All right, let's leave the kids and we'll just go. We There's still time, right? <laughs> kids buy tickets? Yes. Well, yeah, for most of the classes. Well, I know people and they know people, so we uh, could probably get okay. in. Uh, Amy says, we have a bearded dragon named Smoochie. Oh, that's a really cute name for a bearded dragon. Yeah, it is, I right? like that. I like that a lot. I would just tell them I know Bronwyn the Giver and that'll get me right in the door. I know it. <laughs> all right. So uh, Danny's second favorite part of the Tuesday show, we'd like to invite you um, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, to go ahead and type either Bag Lady or Bag Dude in the comments right now. Uh, we super love seeing the comments come through. We appreciate the bag making community. I love the fact that some members will be meeting in person next week in Nashville, Tennessee. That's really awesome. And so thank you for being part of the community, and we really appreciate each and every one of you. All right. Um, I did a little bit of sewing yesterday, so I worked on a quilt block actually. I purchased a subscription to a block of the month program called uh, the perfect half square triangle block of the month and so it's all half square triangles which if you're not a quilter a half square triangle is uh, like this little section here there's the two triangles and it forms the square so this was the block that I finished last month and this was uh, the February block and of course I made everything ten times more difficult by choosing a fabric with stripes so the way um, this block of the month is oriented is you actually sew a whole ton of these little half square triangle units at the same time by sewing them to paper so you're not cutting little bits of fabric you're actually cutting like uh, paper you know full paper sized pieces of fabric sewing them right sides together through sewing through the paper and so it's super fast and easy if you weren't using stripes like I was so um, that method doesn't exactly work for the stripes because I wanted to orient all the stripes in a very particular manner as you can see by my finished block and uh, so this probably took me two or three hours which um, I think everyone else probably took an hour or less but uh, hopefully it'll be worth it and um, I noticed when I took a picture of the block yesterday that it kind of makes me a little dizzy to look at the picture with all the stripes so um, I don't know. Danny said he liked it though so I do like it a lot. Um, hopefully it'll continue. It's going to be all black quilt with just the the yeah. Centers yeah. Color. So all the all the blocks will be like a black background. I like that, yeah. Yeah. I noticed it picks up a little bit of fuzz the, with the black fabric, but I guess it's okay. Just keep a lint roller nearby for this particular. Well, quilt. I'm sure just because it's where you're, you're working at stuff. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of On threads. The couch. I don't think it's gonna be that issue. Yeah, there's a lot of threads sticking to it. I I got a wonderful letter this past week, and I wanted to share it. And there's also photographs to go with the letter, so I'm not sure if what if it makes sense to put the photographs on at the beginning oh, or. You said for Sunday show, sir, on the email. No, I didn't. I did not post the pictures. Oh, so we'll so will we save the letter for Sunday or uh, how are we gonna? Do I could this? roll over to my computer and do it as you're talking about if you want. Yeah, could you? Sorry, I had it all planned out. I I'm think rolling. I'm pretty sure I said Tuesday's show, but it's okay. It said social Sunday. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, all right. So I'm going to read Cindy's letter. Uh, Cindy's letter is about her husband, John, and then Danny's going to get Cindy's photographs together, and we'll get them up on the screen. So, um, again, this is from Cindy, and she says, Dear Sarah and Dan, this is a short letter to tell you that my husband has never wanted anything to do with any of my hobbies. He supports my sewing as he knows it brings me joy and comfort. I may not be the best at what I do, but I enjoy what I do. Anyway, this year my husband decided he wanted to sew a bag for his mother for her 86th birthday in March. Mind you, he has never sewn anything before, and, and out of all of your bags, he's decided to sew the satellite bag. It's killing me, but I'm making him do it all, cutting, ironing, sewing. I'm guiding him and showing him how to control speed, line up the seams, and much more. Today he learned how to thread my baby lock. It has a speed control that uh, my Juki and um, Cindy's Juki is named Rosie. Um, she says uh, the speed control is on the baby lock but not the Juki. And she says, can't tell you how many bad words he says. I had to let him use Rosie um, because my baby lock decided to act up. Well, now we have a new bag dude in our group. Um, and she says, happy sewing and a proud lady from California. And that's from Cindy. And the letter was about her husband, John. And she sent me a follow-up email and she said, um, he even went a step further and said he can help me sew my projects now that he's comfortable sewing. So, oh. Oh, that's oh. I'll, I'll slow it down. But okay. It, I couldn't rotate the pictures. Okay, sorry about the, the photographs being sideways, but that's uh, John sewing on the Juki. That's the satellite bag that he finished with his mother's name um, embroidered on the flap. And I think John did an amazing job, and I think he... he no, let me try to do something. Okay. Danny's going to try to fix the pictures. Uh, I guess that's what happens when we try to get uh, well, usually give me the... the pictures in last minute. Sorry about that, Danny. Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Good job, Danny. All right. Well, let's do it one more time. One. Okay. There's the finished satellite bag for John's mother. And so it's Betty's on it it's a surprise, by the way. It's a surprise birthday gift for John's mother. And uh, he did an amazing job. And I was saying um, I think he really shot for the stars with choosing the satellite bag. Not that it's super difficult, but for someone who's never sewn a bag before, I think it turned out amazing. And, like, I just want to stand up and give a standing ovation. Good job, John. And, Cindy, thanks for sharing your letter and allowing me to share it with everyone on the show. And um, I think this is just fantastic. Ooh. And how wonderful to have uh, something to do, a hobby in common to do together, especially since he said um, he can help sew any future projects. So that sounds super fun. And that's, That's awesome. put a lot of pressure on me for that park sling. I'll tell you what. I just asked Val <laughs> for the show. I'm like, Val, you're going to help me, you know, pick fabric and cut it. Because I was sort of leaning one direction and going with the park sling. Then I saw some other bags. I'm like, you know what? It's hard to decide what I want to pick for fabric. And it's like, I think that's slowing me down. But I, I think this week I want to, you know, start on cutting it out, watching the video probably 20 times, and um, attempting it. Or what about starting with something easier less no. pieces no okay nope <laughs> okay. if he can make a satellite bag i think the satellite bag is equal to the park sling i hope because he did a great job with it that's his first bag yeah i would say they're both intermediate ish yeah i would say that yep we'll All see right. um again i really enjoyed seeing those photographs i'm glad you were awesome able to work. get those up last yep. minute and in the correct orientation thanks danny <laughs> All right, so we'd like to invite you now, if you enjoy our live shows, our sewing tutorial videos, and bag making videos, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit the share button and share this video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope, if you're not already subscribed, that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified <laughs> of any upcoming live shows and other videos that we put on YouTube. And... Uh, Keep talking, sir. Oh, sorry. Um, and uh, <laughs> regardless, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, if you could at least hit the like button, which is the little thumbs up icon, because the likes, shares, and subscribes help us out so much because it helps bring other people into our bag making community via the videos who might not have seen our videos before. So we really appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. I'm going to take one out of Sarah's playbook and skip the order like she did on Sunday and go to my pick of the week because I saw this comment. And said, so Don said, I love my park sling bag. And guess what, Don? Bam! I picked your park sling bag. Uh, I thought you did an excellent job with it. It looks like that top green leather silver color on the sides. Tulip pink on the front. Zuma. Uh, love your selection, your fussy cutting, the colors. Great job, Don. Two thumbs up, Don. Great so, job. Yeah, so that was Danny's pick of the week. Uh, if you're new yep. around here, Danny picks every Tuesday 
um, out of the Facebook group or on social media, a bag that really kind of pops out at him and he yep. enjoys. And um, yeah, great job, Don. And thank you so much for posting your finished bag. And it looks yeah. really beautiful. Awesome. I, I, I just got to take her note. She says, I sewed slow. I will definitely be sewing slow. I promise you that. <laughs> Like on the, cause my Juki has a speed control and there's like a rabbit. That's what I'm scared of. Cause when she goes fast, sometimes like, J -j 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 it just takes off. I'm like, whoa. I don't even sew that fast, but there's a little turtle on there. You can bring the dial down to the turtle and you can sew like, you know, do, 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 do. Okay, really sir. Sad. Let's not get too far. Are you having fun? All right. Since you please. I'm going to kill it guys. You're going to love it. If not, we'll just say I never did it and I'm just going to throw it away and no one knows the difference. <laughs> All right, since you mixed up my outline order, um, just a friendly reminder, the very first book club uh, show on the live shows will be exactly one month from today on March 12th. I decided to give advance notice on the first book just because it's a UK title and it wasn't um, for those that wanted an actual hard copy. Um, I purchased mine, uh, I think, used on Amazon from the UK as well, and it took a little bit of extra time to get here. So that's why we're giving so much advance notice. But going forward, um, each book will be announced one month before it's discussed in the show. But this is the first selection. It's called The Sewing Machine. The author is Natalie Fergie. I know many of you have read it already because I've gotten emails. Um, many of you have enjoyed the first book. So many people said they couldn't stop. And once they started, it took them maybe two days mm -hmm. and they finished the whole deal and listening to an audiobook or even reading it. Right. So it's available. I've heard people get it from their local library, an audiobook. Um, an ebook, um, Hoopla, I think, is an app for audiobooks. Maybe I'm mistaken, or ebooks. I'm not sure which one. Um, I also got an ebook copy on my Kindle, and so there's lots of options for participating. And if um, one month's book is not your style, you can just feel free to pick and choose the books either that you can get or that you're interested in, and there will be free projects each month. So, March 12th, when we discuss the first selection on the show, We'll also be providing a free brand new PDF bag pattern as well as a video to go along with that. That'll be free also. So we'll be showing off the first project on March 12th when we discuss the book. And there's a link in the description if you're interested in the actual details of book club. So there's no need to sign up anywhere or anything like that. Just show up on the dates on the schedule we'll, when we'll be discussing the books and then also um, showing off the free project so i'm really excited about that someone asked was there a challenge this month michelle was kind enough to put a link up to where you can find that challenge so if people on youtube that can't see the facebook comment oh okay. that's the link to where you want to post your of the month challenge okay awesome that yeah that's the february minikins challenge and we'll also be having um that kind of reminded me we'll also be having a bunch of uh free prizes and sort of a small contest at the end of book club for anyone who's made any of the book club projects. So there will be six projects. At the end, we'll have like a great big contest so everyone can share photos of their finished projects if you've made any of the free book club projects. And so um, there'll be prizes to go along with that. So trying to make it exciting. I know um, I am always excited uh, when I find out a about a new book and the book turns out to be awesome. Like one of those books, when you finish it, you're like, oh gosh, now what do I do with my life? You know, because the book was so good. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, excited for that to start. So when I like to read books, I love reading sets of books. So I can mm. start one book and just, I love just reading it, like 15 series books of those series uh, in continuation. Uh, what's your favorite either series or author uh, or a few of them? Brandon Sanderson is my favorite author. Jim Butcher. Um, I also love um, The Wheel of Time, Robert Jordan. And what kind of books are those? They're Just... all pretty much fantasy books. Okay. So like yeah. uh, wizards, wizards and... Yeah. Stuff okay. like that. Okay. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to be answering some questions on the show live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type your question either on Facebook or YouTube. I'll answer as many questions as I can. And uh, Danny will be putting those up on the screen. So Carla says, Danny, are you able to give a deadline when you will have the Park Sling backpack done? Nope, because I don't want to lock <laughs> myself into something that's going to be like, oh, I got to get it done next Tuesday. And I'm like, uh, well, it's Monday. Sarah, you're going to help me cut it out and sew it together. And it's, it's not going to work that way. So it's like, <laughs> you cut it out, you do the stuff like there, and like I'll show you how to thread the machine. And it's going to be like that. And I'll be calling Violet over for assistance. I really wanted to do it like a version where... Um, Twitch has like live streaming like this, but it's more interactive when you deal with people like through chat and you get super chat pops up and uh, maybe asking like viewers for help. It's because Sarah does not want to help. I'll tell you that honestly, 
She's not going to want to help me do this. Cause, I'll uh, help you a little bit, but I right. mean, we have a video, so I, I don't know how much I need to... I like that personal one-on-one, -on -one, you know. Maybe I could... I'm trying to think of what I could do that's productive in here, but not sewing. Maybe I could just cut out fabric for something, for a bag, while you're sewing, so I'm like still in here if you have a question. I got a better idea. Why don't we have you sew it, I'll take credit, and say it was for me. <laughs> uh, no. Dang. <laughs> That's funny. I see a lot of comments about, uh, oh, here, there's a question up there. I see a lot of comments about um, people agreeing with similar books um, as what you mentioned. Your question is up there, I know, sir. I know. Gretchen says, is there any way you can share how you choose fabrics for bags? So I don't know why. I feel like in the last couple of years, this has gotten more difficult for me to choose fabrics for a bag. I normally gravitate toward the larger or the largest print out of a particular fabric line or any fabric line. So I look for usually the large scale prints, um, but I've ha been having a hard time lately because normally I pick the project first or if I'm working on a new pattern, I, ha I already have the project in mind obviously, but I have a really hard time choosing the fabric because um, if I'm using it for a pattern, certain other extra things that are running through my mind that normally wouldn't apply, for instance, um, choosing fabrics that have a lot of white in them. Those are really hard to photograph because I use a white background for my step photos and also it's hard to see what the shape of the, the fabric or the piece is if it's blending in with your background. So I have to think about things like that. Um, a lot of things, black fabrics blend in also. Um, if the fabric is too busy, like you can't really tell, like say if I have a, in the picture there's a magnetic snap or I um, show a direction of lines on the fabric. If the fabric is super busy, that doesn't work also. So I have to not only pick a large scale print and something that I like, but I have to pick something that's going to photograph well and be clear in photos as well. So that kind of, I don't know, it kind of almost cancels out half the things because a lot of the large scale prints are also really super busy. So. Um, I spend a, usually a few hours choosing the fabric, and sometimes Danny suggests something that works um, as well. Um, All right, time limits up on this question, sir. Sorry, can we? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Next question's waiting for you. Are you still talking about your fabric choices? Cheryl says, "Will you be usually having?" Usually comes to me and says, "Danny, what's the, you like better?" I'm like that one. She's like, "Okay, good choice." I'm like, "Okay." Will you be having templates for the Aragon bag? I want to make these to sell. So first off, I'm glad that you're interested in it enough to to want to sell them. Thank you for that. Um, we will I'll actually write myself a note. We'll try to add that to the next set of templates. Um, I was also going to see about the park sling, the satellite bag, and the tutor bag for templates. Uh, we try to do them just a few at a time just so it doesn't get, get overwhelming, like adding the new templates to the shop. Gina says, Danny, have you considered black cork for your park sling with a funky interior? You know, I actually, someone mentioned that last show <laughs> when we were talking about it. And I think that's a great idea because I do love the black cork. I even love the black cork with the silver. Um, I also really love is the um, the corks that are she has it's got like um, a pearl sheen to it. You mm -hmm. know, like the yeah, charcoal. Those are nice. Yeah, I like those a lot, and those may work well with cork. I'm not sure how difficult it is to sew, so I'm going to confer with Sarah first. You know, for me. Well, I was going to suggest since you've never made a bag, just right. to stick with the quilting cotton, yeah. so it's not extra. But I, I did want Thickness some style to that where it's like the black cork, so it'd be a basic exterior and then like a fun interior color or something bright, something, you know, cartoony or something like that, like um, your backstitch fabric style, something like that. But, uh, you know, plain front. Actually, I think it should be okay. If you want to go with the cork, I can just help you like near the end. If you oh, want. you'll help me? What's this going to cost me? <laughs> we'll have to barter later. Out to dinner somewhere nice. How about that? It's not McDonald's. Uh like a sit down. <laughs> it's funny, some you know, when Danny's in the mood to go out to eat. Um, sometimes I'm like, I'm, anywhere you want, because I'll eat all the places well, she I, eats. I usually <laughs> insist on like a sit down restaurant, because I, I like to, I like, I enjoy going out to eat. I like sitting down and just kind of relaxing, and I, I feel like you don't get that when you go like through the drive through and then take it home. <laughs> <laughs> Karen no, says, uh, were Jim Butcher's books about a warlock private investigator and a short lived TV show? Absolutely, and it was based in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Great series. Someone said we should do a so long together with Danny uh, doing the park sling. <laughs> it won't buy the page too fast before I can get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I 
All right. Uh, Mary Grace says, Sarah, I'm working on the park sling bag. Does it matter if I use a zipper by the yard like you did or a regular bag zipper? So regular handbag zipper will work. I just um, wanted, I wanted to act, to be honest, I wanted the metallic looking zipper teeth, but it really is actually a nylon zipper. It's not a, a metal zipper. Um, and I only had that in the zipper by the yard. So that's what I went with because I wanted it to match because I used black and white fabric for both of the pattern cover backpacks and so that's uh, what I wanted to go with but a black zipper would have worked for me fine um, and your handbag zipper doesn't need to have two pulls one pull is fine it could just be a single pull handbag zipper Sue says Sarah it would be cool if you could design a pattern for cube storage um, the the bin that could be used in an, an Ikea style cube wall unit it would look so pretty in different fabrics I agree a thousand percent that's a great idea thank you for the suggestion um, cube organizer I'm gonna write myself a note What's the name of the block of the month again? Um, oh, uh, the block of the month that I showed the quilt blocks for. This was, uh, the website is Freshly Pieced, and the block of the month is called the Perfect Half Square Triangle Block of the Month. Um, but again, the website is freshlypieced.com. And you should be able to see it, uh, the block of the month, uh, on the from the main page. Um, Hope says, Michelle Graham, glad to see you back in here. Uh, I saw two things. One, Michelle posted on her Instagram. She got a bunch of new, um, I guess, accessories. One of like you know different stuff. Hardware for the, and hardware, stuff. Hardware, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for the bags. And it looks like she's getting ready to go wild and makes a bunch of cool stuff. You know, and I really like following her on Instagram. She makes she shows her projects. She always has really cool bags, and um, it's, it's great to see Michelle getting ready to. She's getting her uh, she's stuff getting her in order, ready, so yeah. she yeah, so she could start sewing. That's great again. to see that. Yep. All right, um, let's see. I saw a question about the ba the book uh, the book club projects. Um, it went by really fast also. I think the question was when would the book club projects be shown? So the first one will be showing on March 12th and then every month following that till we get all the six projects out and then the contest will be at the very end. Linda says, on the sewing room stand, when completed, the lining side faces out. Yes, that is correct. And there's also a note in the pattern um, regarding the sewing room stand. Um, so your lining fabric, when your sewing room stand is activated and it's it's in the stand position, the lining fabric is the portion that has the mesh and um, the stand portion. And when you have it all folded up with the Velcro, um, the exterior is the, the part that shows out when it's flat and folded. Um, Michelle says, Danny, fold all the laundry, folding all the laundry is your payment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind folding it. I just, I don't fold it to her tight specs. Mine are like, she does a tri-fold to that new technique. I'm like, like a two-fold and fold, fold, fold. Doreen says, can the wallets and smaller bags and minikins too be made with cork or would it be too thick? So <laughs> I think that depends. I have seen a couple of the day trip cell phone wallets made with cork. Um, I'm not sure. And the, this is the day trip cell phone wallet. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, I sewing it myself with cork. I'd be hesitant just because of the layers. With there's like a front pocket over here with a flap, and um, as it is a smaller project, I'd be worried it would be really thick. But it, like I said, it's been done, so it's doable. Um, a lot of the other, uh, what were the other, the Charm School wallet and the Day Trip wallet, um, I think could be made with cork. Um, I'm sure I've seen some of those made with cork also. Um, yeah, I, th I guess that's my I guess that's my completed answer. Bronwyn says uh, the Bronwyn Michelle Danny sew along over the park sling backpack. Is that what you're talking about? You're trying to get people on board, so you're not the only one sewing it. Uh, no, I think Bronwyn. People were saying like to do a sew along for the park sling, mm -hmm. but I think Bronwyn wants to jump on and you know, you know, T to force you to to make it. Michelle also <laughs> said I should join the the. The sublime so long, but oh, that one's that's March. a lot of bags. I mean, I'm going from none to one to two within like a month. It's going to be uh, pretty intense. Who knows? We'll see how this one goes. Then we'll work our way to the next one. Oh, that's a good, the other one was a good question too. You can put that one up too. Um, no, not that. Well, you're going to answer that it anyway because it's though. there. Yvonne says, what was the lining fabric that you did not need to use SF-101 from Fat Quarter Shop that you talked about on Sunday? Those were the Sonoma solids and those are available at fatquartershop.com. Bella says, could you make something with a fabric roll? I can't remember the name of it. I think you mean jelly roll. Jelly rolls are strips of fabric that are two and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric, which is usually at least 42 inches wide. Um, so they're all strips and usually the jelly roll is from a particular fabric line. So you get one or two prints from every print in the fabric line. 
Um, so it's a good selection of fabrics. Actually, one of the book club projects will be made with strips of fabric. So tune in for that one. Either strips of fabric or you can make it in all, all in a solid. Um, but I have it. Uh, that one's probably the one I'm looking forward to the most. So um, stay tuned for, for those projects. Arlene says, I'm looking for the amethyst bag pattern in your shop, but only see the bag. Is the pattern um, available? So uh, we have that one that particular pattern available as a paper pattern, a PDF pattern. There's also an optional video. Um, and uh, let me know if you have difficulty finding that, but it should all be in the drop down box for the Amethyst Project bag in the product listing. Lori says, Where did you learn to pattern make? So I just, I didn't uh, professionally learn. I just sort of, uh, I started off by designing free patterns for Pelon, um, and their w website is pelonprojects.com. And it was just, uh, with anything, the more you do something, the better you get at it. And so um, learning first with writing free patterns and projects on my blog, and then um, later with the videos, uh, I guess it was just practice writing a lot of patterns. Um, Sherry says, when you're paper piecing, how often do you have to change needles? That's a really good question. Um, Normally for bag making, I change a needle after about every project. So approximately six to eight hours of sewing, I'll just change a needle. And I buy those needles on bulk, in bulk, and so I, I have plenty of them in stock. Um, for paper piecing, I don't know if I've ever paid attention for paper piecing. So these two blocks that I made were a uh, foundation paper piece, so that means sewing the fabric to paper. Um, but they were, as you can see, the blocks were really quick and I only get um, one block made every month because that's when the instructions come out and so I'd probably be comfortable making several blocks or at least a small quilt with the same needle for the paper piecing. I usually use uh, the fusible applique papers by Hugs and Kisses for um, foundation paper piecing so it's a little bit different than printer paper but um, I ran out of that paper the other day so I did use regular printer paper and uh, um, yeah, it was fine with the regular paper also. Terry says, Danny, will you be adding any embroidery to the front of your bag? Maybe a dragon. I was thinking about embroidering something on there. I'm not sure if it's going to be a dragon or something or just, hmm. you know, you the do? coolest and just have a picture pointed like an arrow to myself. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I don't know. But I was thinking about some kind of embroidery. Actually, I was thinking was using the, um, the top grain. Faux leather. Faux leather and quilting it. Um. I like quilted leather look, but actually oh, not free black. motion quilting, but like where it's like um, diamonds. diamonds. Yeah. Yep. I like that look that a lot. That would look cool. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah. I've got a lot of ideas and at nighttime before I go to bed, I'm sitting there for like <laughs> a half hour, 45 minutes, just thinking about everything you wouldn't imagine trying to go to bed. And that's what I've been thinking about. <laughs> um, Cindy says, can the zipper by the yard have two zipper heads? Yes. In fact, you can. I think I... I have the shortest term memory, but we did do a video, video on how to add uh, the zipper heads to the zippers by the yard. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think I did demonstrate both the one head and then having the two on there so the two heads are facing each other. Um, but that video should be on YouTube. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I did demonstrate both of the heads. I'm pretty sure I did, though. Uh, Deborah says, any ideas on making a handle with Harris Tweed? Um, I do have some Harris Tweed. I've not used it yet, and I'm not sure why. I think I bought two or three pieces of it from uh, England via Etsy. Um, I guess it depends on what kind of handle. I don't know if you're making uh, Harris Tweed's a little thicker. So perhaps instead of making it like double full bias tape, so like four layers of fabric, perhaps if you did, oh, I don't know. Maybe if you sewed the two layers right sides together and then turned or, gosh, I don't know. That's a really good question. It's a little bit thicker than quilting cotton, so that's why I'm thinking through my head. Uh, let me think on that one for a little bit. Um, Hope says, what size needle do you use for paper piecing? So I use the same needle as uh, when I'm sewing bags. So that's a 9014 Microtex needle. And um, So you use a sewing machine needle? It's the same thing? You're not doing anything by hand? For foundation paper piecing? Yeah. Well, when I did these blocks? Yeah. yeah, this was all in the sewing machine. I saw um, you do it on the paper, but I thought you had to do some by hand. If you're sewing that's through English paper piecing, right? Yeah, that's different. Oh, okay. That's um, so if you're it. if you're doing foundation paper piecing, uh, if you're using regular like printer or copy paper, you just need to decrease your stitch length, um, and the reason for that. So you want to decrease. I usually use 1.5 millimeters. My normal stitch length is 2.5 millimeters. 
The reason you're decreasing the stitch length for regular paper is so it perforates the paper, kind of like how stamps used to be, how stamps were perforated. Um, you need the smaller stitch length so it perforates the paper and you can just fold the paper over and easily tear it away without harming your stitches. Prudence says, did you use the perfect half square triangle templates from Freshly Pieced? Yes, actually, um, it was sort of a requirement for the pattern. The block of the month for the perfect half square triangles at Freshly Pieced um, uses the, the companion templates. And so the templates are for, I think, one inch to eight inch finished sizes of half square templates, and you're actually sewing through paper. Um, you probably want to check out her website for more details about that, but it's brilliant and something I've never seen before as, as far as sewing with the half square triangles. Lillian says, are you going to have a demo on ironing a bag? It is on my list, I promise. Um, I'm not sure when we'll get to it. Uh, we're trying to get uh, a new notion going so that I could use it in the demonstration. So that's the major delay on that. Apologize. I've got great news for Lillian as well. I saw she had two orders this morning. I combined the shipping and refunded the, the one to save you and they're all gonna come in one package. It's funny because uh, I noticed a few times when Danny was printing orders uh, this week, like this morning, he was like, oh, there's Lillian. She placed an order. Actually, she placed two orders. And we remember people from the show. And sometimes people have a different name on their handle than what their real name is, uh, such as uh, he noticed the other day when Montana Wendy placed an order. Oh, yeah. Montana Wendy, you know, watches Here's the show. Here's a big clue. On... She is from Montana. Well, but... <laughs> but her name, her real name is like she has a first and last name and like... Yeah. But we, we re recognize Montana Wendy. You know, there's Montana Wendy. Yes. <laughs> Diana says, Danny, your video should be called Sewing with the Bag Dude, Sew with Me, Learn Together. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but who's going to run, the, who's, who's gonna run the camera when you're sewing? I can do now? it myself, actually. I've showed Sarah before, but she didn't want to attempt it. But I can do it with my phone. Amanda says, uh, do you have a Sarah's Favorite Things place where you could list some of your favorite supplies, like the paper piecing, paper, and needles, and threads? So actually, That's a great idea. It is a great idea, but most I feel like a majority of those things we stock in the Notion section of the shop. Um, and we've done videos for some of them, and we've placed the videos in the product listings. So if you're interested in seeing about, about some of the tools, um, all the tools that we carry in the Notion sections are ones that I really love. And you can just find those by going to the website, sosweetness.com, hit the Shop tab, and then the Notions sub tab. And then you can see all the notions there. So like the threads I use are there, those papers. Uh, we don't carry needles, but I do use the 9014 Microtex needles by Schmetz. And I've also used Oregon brand needles in the past. So those are the two brands of needles that I use. Carrie says, when will the next paid pattern release be any hints? Um, so I decided after the January four pack video bundle. Let me say something really fast before you say the date. I told Sarah, as soon as we finish this set here, Whatever she's got planned in the future, I want to start it literally next week because this last one, we finished it two days before and the day before I was still editing. And I hate being last minute. Working under pressure is fine, but I don't want to wait to the last second to do it. And I know she had a big process. We had two new patterns in the four pack, ton of tester notes, going through stuff, fixing stuff. It's a little big process. So I said, Sarah, make your decision and let's get going next week. Now go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is I'm probably not going to announce the release date till it's closer in light of what happened in January because... <laughs> you locked yourself in, right? Just like when they said, Danny, when are you going to make your... I locked myself in because yeah. I think I started saying in maybe October that it'll be at the end of January. And then it felt like we had a ton of time, like November, December. We're like, yeah, we've got tons of time. We only need to do four videos, even though two of them are for new patterns. And then, you know, middle of January, we still have no videos filmed and it's like, you know... We promise, so we've got to fulfill it. So uh, yeah, we were, we'll, we'll probably hold off naming any kind of dates until yeah. a little closer. We Just, were filming pretty late one day. I think it's seven o'clock at night. It was like a, that was like a fifteen-hour day. Yeah, that was a long day. And <laughs> well, it was a fifteen-hour day of filming, and I think you edited that night. So for you, it was probably. I don't want to. I don't want to think about. That's it. the one you're just like, Danny. Why are you staying up so late? I'm I'm editing till three in the morning. And uh, <laughs> hello. Ooh, uh, Amanda says when I made a handle with vinyl, the needle perforated it and it fell apart. Any ideas on how to stop that next time? So, um, I'm thinking you probably needed to lengthen your stitch length for that, um, especially sewing through thicker layers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like to lengthen my stitch length just so the stitches look nice and spaced out, like how they normally do when you have really thin layers of fabric. 
And I'm guessing the, the stitches were really close together, which would cause a perforation. So you can always do a little test sew on a small scrap of the, the vinyl or the faux leather first, just to test your, test your stitches and your um, tensions and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking lengthening the stitch length will help solve that problem. Um, Bronwyn says, my real name is Steven, Steven the Giver. <laughs> I'm not sure what that replies or <laughs> implies to. I didn't see a comment connecting, but... but Patricia says, what is the monthly foundation project you are doing? Where is it from? So it's, uh, the website is Freshly Peace, and the, the program is, it's a block of the month called uh, the Perfect Half Square Triangle, and she abbreviates this HST for Half Square Triangle block of the month. Patsy says, so you carry Orful thread. So yes, we carry Orful thread in 40 weight spools. Uh, we have uh, white and black in the bigger spools, and then we have sets of the small spools in different color packs. Um, so like we have an M&M pack, which has, uh, I think, brown, green, and blue. Uh, we have other packs named after different candies, uh, but the, the colors are in the smaller spool packs. Sandy says, some of your favorite things are businesses like the scissor sharpeners. You should make a tab for your favorite things. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that either. I definitely will put a blog post together with that. Thank you. Terry, I think you're just on fire tonight. We're like connected on the same wavelength. I just seen your comment after comment. I was just like. Terry says, why not get it all done? Um, she's talking about the next set of videos and then surprise everyone with the date. That sounds pretty good. I think so. Um, Bronwyn, what is the name of your cat? That's a question. That is the name of your cat. Like Steven the Giver. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. I see, I see. Yeah, we do need a nice vacation. Michelle says, you both deserve a nice vacation. You both work so hard, and we all appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you all participating. Definitely, 100%. You know, that's the greatest part about it is the community. When I, I'm in the, the Facebook group, you may not see it all the time, but I, I, I'll spend a couple hours each day reading comments and looking through threads. Uh, and everyone's just so nice and helpful, and that's why I get to I associate the names I see on the show. And I'll, you know, when I'm printing orders in the morning, I, you know, I can see who did this, who did that, who these people are, and you guys are really the best. Sorry, I just found a question that popped up that I sure. thought I could answer. <laughs> Anita says, "What do you think of auto headliner foam?" So I've gotten a piece in the past. Um, <laughs> so the difference between automotive headliner foam and foam interfacing is that foam interfacing is made for sewing, specifically for sewing on a home sewing machine. And so the foam interfacing is covered on the top and the bottom of the foam with a very thin layer of fabric to make it easy to go through the sewing machine. Automotive headliner foam or naked foam is just the foam by itself, so it doesn't have that fabric covering. So it um, tends to kind of drag through the sewing machine. And um, a solution to that would be perhaps putting a piece of interfacing on the side that doesn't have uh, the fabric attached to it so that it goes through the machine more easily. But um, if you can get, if you have access to the foam interfacing, the foam interfacing is just the best option, I think. All right, here we go. We got the solution. <clears throat> you gonna read it? Uh, Bronwyn says, <laughs> you were talking about the orders and how people use their real names, et cetera, like Montana Wendy isn't her real name. Well, Bronwyn, you gotta change your name so we see it on there. It's gonna say Steven the Giver, not Bronwyn Carr anymore. Kathy says, speaking of scissor sharpener, um, who do you send yours to for sharpening? Just messed up my scissors, hit a hidden pin. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. The website is called simplysharper.com. They have a location in the U.S. in Wisconsin and one in Texas, and so you can choose whichever state is closest to you. You send your scissors off. You could send, um, I think, knives and other things for sharpening as well. Um, they charge, a, I believe, a flat shipping rate up to maybe seven pairs of scissors or knives, and so... I took advantage of that and sent a couple pair of scissors in for sharpening. And again, the website is simplysharper.com. I'm trying to find someone that said they don't have pinking shears or a serger. What can they do? It went by so quick, and I'm trying to go back oh, and find okay. it. Okay. But I assume you just cut your little triangles in the edges. That would, if that. Pinking shears or serger for finishing I think, I think garments? I'm trying to. I'm not sure what it said exactly. I okay. saw it and just there's a ton okay. of comments just. Zoom well, by. if it was, it was, if it was, if the question was in regards to finishing a garment seam, which I'm not sure if it was since, um, I mean, I do sew garments occasionally, but Hong Kong seams would be a good idea to finish a seam if you don't have a serger or pinking shears, which would fi finish the seam also. Well, if you find it, that's okay. This, yeah, it's oh, that's, the whole oh, of it. Okay. All right. So I think the Hong Kong Answer. seams would be 
would be a, a good option for finishing the seams of your garments. Oh, I see Sharon says happy Valentine's Day to all of you right there. You Where is it at? Right there. <laughs> I see the little hearts on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. I forgot for a second that Valentine's Day was this Thursday. I hope everyone has a lovely Valentine's Day on Thursday. I made a smart move and got Sarah's, I got Sarah flowers early, so I don't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, the day of. It's all ready to go. I even got the cards around the table. Was that from Saturday you got the the flowers? Uh, It's when you went to dinner for four hours, whatever night that was. Oh, Thursday. That was Thursday last week. Thursday. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, he got me a card from himself and a separate card from the kids. No, I, they're both from me. Oh, they're from both me. from you? Oh, yeah. two cards. How I don't like the kids. The cards are both so great. I'm oh. like, you know, I'm going to get both. But I didn't open the cards yet because I like to have the, the cards on the actual day, like Christmas or whatever the holiday is. So I'm waiting. I have not opened my cards yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we'll call it there. Okay. All right. So um, I apologize if I did not get to your question live. We'll be here again uh next Tuesday, as we are every Tuesday for Ask Sarah. Um, and Sundays. And Sundays is Social Sunday. Um, thank you so much for joining us for Ask Sarah. I hope you have a great week. Have a happy Valentine's Day yep. and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.